Hi everyone, welcome to Beyond Space, even at the Tundra. In today's episode, we will talk about the geology of Mars. Our recently published research in indigenous geology provides an important insight into the composition of Mount Sharp in the Gale Crater, where NASA's Curiosity rover is exploring. And the study could help us better understand Martian climate and also its hydrological and sedimentary history. So without any further ado, please welcome the lead author of this research, William Rappel of the Research Institute in Astrophysics and Planetology in Toulouse, France. So hi, William. Thank you for your uh, participation. Hello. <laughs> okay, so um, if uh, you can present uh, your research, uh, what did you find exactly? Sure, uh, I can introduce this. Uh, the idea of this publication is that uh, it's been a major goal of the mission uh, to reach an area uh, that we are now at the foot here with the rover. Uh, it's an area uh, that we, we chose actually landing in Gale Crater because it has uh, uh, um, several hundred meters, actually uh, almost six kilometer high mountain that's on, exclusively made of sediments, sedimentary rock, layered rocks. And we chose this area in particular because from orbit, we saw that there was a transition, a mineralogical transition that we could see from orbit. At the base of these layers, there is a layers enriched in clays and above that enriched in sulfates. And that's a, a mineralogical transition that we see globally on Mars elsewhere. And we targeted this area with the rover to have a chance to study clays in depth. That's what we've been doing for years. And we hope to be able to reach the sulfate unit uh, to study what could be behind this mineralogical transition. And actually, before even reaching that point, we used the telescope on the rover uh, that is um, on board the ChemCam instrument. And this telescope uh, is able to acquire images with uh, uh, the greatest res details we could ever get on the stratigraphy ahead and uh, we could not see the details from orbit what is behind those layers we we, we would see the would be layered rocks but the details to that tells you it's, is it volcanic is it fluvial is it alien uh, this is things you do from the ground with rovers and for the first time we had the, those telescopic images using the rover telescope uh, that brought us details and we discovered uh, what 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 uh, are the sedimentary structure in that uh, sulfate unit that we didn't know, uh, we didn't have information before. And we discovered actually there is an environmental change. That we, it's been eight years we're exploring sediment made of, uh, laid by uh, by an ancient lake uh, 3.5 billion years ago, and hundreds of meters of those sediment of, of, of fluvial and lake environments that piled up and turned to rock, and then above. With the, with the rover, we discovered structures of cross beddings, a uh, very large scale, like meter, meter scale, a fine cross bedding um, that are uh, cross cutting each other and that are really typical of aeolian dunes. So your environment goes from a lake, it dries somehow, and then it goes into a dune, an arid dune field. Uh, and the surprise, so that's the first time we have a confirmation that sulfates can be related to a climate change on, on Mars, an ancient climate change. And, and above that, the surprise we got is that higher up, it's back to a, a more humid environment because we probe the, this large, very large photography, it's hundreds of meters of thickness. And then higher up, we see structures that are more going uh, back to a more humid environment, maybe a floodplain environment. So it's not a monotonic change to dryness. Um, the climate apparently fluctuated we, we talk about high order fluctuation because those are hundreds of meters. So they represent millions of years of climate record. Um, and they are all like ancient uh, stratigraphy. So we published that paper because that were, was the first details we could get of this uh, climate, of this transition, uh, this ancient transition of the climate on Mars. Yeah, so um, this uh, research um, uh, could tell us something more about, uh, I don't know, uh, the, the presence of liquid water uh, sometime on Mars and uh, aeons ago, like uh, the, this is some hint of uh, um, yes. ancient lakes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, th this, this stratigraphy is age, the age of this stratigraphy, 3.5 billion years ago, is a very crucial time in the history, the global history on Mars. It's a global history that we could we could um, we were able to lay using orbital observation because we saw this change of mineralogy all over Mars in terrains that are very old. And then after three billion years uh, uh, after three billion years ago, all the younger terrains 
there is almost no geological activity. So this, this stratigraph is important. It's in very good shape. It's very ancient. On, on the earth, you could not have an, a stratigraphy of that age. Uh, so it's very old. And it's a record of this last period that we call the Esperian. Uh, and on Mars during the Esperian, uh, it was the last time that water was active uh, on the surface globally. And um, after that, uh, there is no geological activity uh, that is significant uh, in terms of, of water uh, erosion and water alteration. So it's kind of the last time water, Mars had water, and we don't know how, it, how the climate changed. Uh, we don't, it's the first time we have details on the climate evolution of Mars during that era. And we see large scale fluctuations. Yeah, so, so we can now, uh, based on your study, foresee uh, some, some kind of mega forecast about uh, how the climate on Mars will evolve in the future, right? So we could see uh, um, what, it, what happened to Mars in that time uh, that was a fate, the fate of Mars was very, very typical of Mars. Uh, the Earth didn't experience what Mars experienced, uh, which is that Mars lost its magnetic field globally. Uh, about in that period, a little earlier. Uh, we don't know exactly when, but it's during those ancient time. Uh, and this impacted the atmosphere, for instance. We know the, the, the Earth, uh, the atmosphere of, of, of Mars was eroded uh, by the solar wind because it wasn't protected uh, anymore with the solar. So after that, there was a point of no return and Mars then became arid. But what happened, what, what occurred on that planet that was uh, uh, that had uh, fate, the, the climate had a uh, fate, uh, followed a path of evolution that was very different of, of the Earth. Uh, and we don't know exactly how that unraveled and what happens to, to a planet that, uh, uh, that, that is uh, typical of Mars. Uh, and so now we have some details uh, about that. Yeah. So uh, do you plan some further research, um, uh, getting into further uh, details into uh, the data provided by Curiosity Rover, or are you, uh, are you also seeing to uh, analyze the data uh, provided by the Perseverance Rover? We have uh, um, a rover uh, in, the, in the different area. Do you, do you, uh, you want to study also other uh, regions of Mars to understand better geology and uh, the climate history of the planet, red planet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, we have Perseverance uh, that landed in a crater that is of similar age. So we're going to have uh, to cross the investigation, the geological investigation uh, are, are from the same era, uh, this era where everything, the climate globally changed. And so there might be similarities. We expect to see some similarities in the geological record. And um, also, this paper is kind of a, a roadmap for curiosity. So Curiosity is old, but it's still working. And uh, this rover, what we did with this publication, we said, oh, look, you, with this telescope, we see what's ahead. The ahead, we have like very large climate fluctuation recorded, and we want to know why. Uh, I mentioned loss of the magnetic field, but many things can be, be behind, hidden behind a, a huge climate change like this, a global climate change. And, and so with the rover, only images cannot really tell us. We need the rover then to go there. And so that's on the path of the rover. So I really hope that Curiosity is staying healthy and that we can do analysis to understand what's the origin of those large fluctuations on Mars uh, in the past. Yeah. Uh, do you also want to employ other instruments? You, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of uh, other, or maybe uh, the spacecraft for bridging Mars? or it's uh, like uh, you are focusing on, on the, the robots on the surface to study uh, the, the climate. Yeah. Right, right. My specialty is really on in situ uh, uh, data. I think global data recorded from orbit have a lot of merit. They guided our choices of landing sites, but really what in situ brings is the, the petrology, the origin of the rocks. You can do that only by having a, uh, pictures from the ground at millimeter scale, you need to see grains, you need to see the textures. Only only those, only those, these are already very important. And you can do more, you can do geochemical analysis. Uh, for instance, with the rover, we'll be able to drill and make X-ray diffraction of the powder and know the mineralogy very well of those, um, you know, sand grains that are now turned into rocks uh, because those, those alien uh, dunes that we, we show are ahead, 
uh, they, those were ancient dunes and they, they, they left behind these sand grains that fossilized into rocks. And what's the chemistry of those sand grains? Are they salts? Are they silicates? Those are things we'll know with the Curiosity rover. Okay, so uh, William, thank you so much for your interview. Um, it was a very interesting uh, to hear about your research. Uh, you shed more light on, on this uh, study. But once again, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to host you on our event. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Bye. Good luck with your research. Bye.